Thank you very much, Jeff. And we have Mr. Rucker with us here right now, the daddy uh, to Lisa and to Ashley. And uh, Mr. Rucker, we uh, very much appreciate your being here. You all notice, of course, that he's chosen not to show his face on TV, and we're going to respect that tonight. But thank you so much. We uh, can't imagine the pain that you're going through. I've been told so many times that losing a child is, is like the worst thing anybody could ever, ever feel. And um, we appreciate your coming. And he's still trying to help, so that's why he's here tonight. And, yes. and, and over the last couple of days, how many hours have you slept, sir? Two hours. Two, and right now, I just want to tell you guys, if you see him bending over a little bit, he's having kind of a kidney stone attack himself <laughs> right now. He just got out of the hospital. So he's trying hard to help other people. Let's first, let's first pay tribute to your daughter, all Thank right? You. Ashley would have turned 31 this Sunday. Love German chocolate cake, right? Right. And everybody right loved her, right. right? Yes. What was special about her? Uh, just, just a great person in general. She loved everybody and seemed like most people loved her back. And she had a career going. She was making like, what, $24 an hour at for At one while. point, yes. And then, uh, not as of late, but at one point at, uh, at Heath and Orthopedic, she was doing well. So let's talk about when she first met. You mentioned a minute ago that for the first what what time period that uh, the suspect here, Chad, was nice to her? Right, he was nice to her in the beginning, probably four months worth of it. What'd they do, they went out clubbing and? Right, and then going out to eat and things, but. And then he got really nasty, not just verbally though, right? Not just verbally, uh, I would say sexually, uh, physically, and finally the end. And so you saw some times when she was, you said, beaten. H how did you know that? It was obvious? Very obvious. Marks, bruises. And there was a knife? Yes, uh, yeah. He uh, stabbed her in the stomach at one point, Ashley. And about the metal plates? Metal plates in her cheekbones from the beating she took from Chad. So how many times would you say she she called 911 or called the police? Eh, probably 30 at least. And when they came, what would they do? Out of all those times, this is a sad part. He probably got arrested once or twice and right back out of jail. And, and I'm sure as a daddy, um, I mean, am I assuming too much that you just wanted to knock him off basically? Can I say that? You could, you could say that. I insulted him in every way to hope he would hit me to get him arrested. What did you say to him? Oh, I can't no, even we can't say it here. TV, I but... can't say it here, but it was bad enough that he should have hit me, and he was, he was smart enough not to hit me. So that was kind of a strategy. You tried, but it didn't work. Yes, I'm, it didn't work. It didn't and work. what else did you try to get her out of this? I tried over and over to get her out of this. For three years, huh? At least three years, and because it was so physical and abrasive, I told her, you will die. It's that simple. And what'd she say? She ignored me. There wasn't really much response. She ignored me. And you got her to try to move out? Yes, I did. I tried to help her. I let her move in and stayed with me about a month and then she would be sneaking out right back to see him. Do you have any idea why she kept going back and going back? Nobody could ever figure that out, no. And I couldn't figure that out. And just uh, all I know is I did the best I could. And uh, people better believe it. You will wind up like this, like Ashley, deceased. If you could say something to any woman who's in this right now, like even at the beginning, when they're first starting to realize, what well, this guy's mean. This guy's mean to me. What? What would you say? You, you get hit one time, you better leave. That's what I would tell you for sure, because it won't stop. How many guns did he have? Massive. Like I don't know how many. I, I would say at least six. And did he point them? At people's head, yes. At, at my deceased daughter's apartment, he put, put guns on people's head. And, and you were saying that, that Lisa, the daughter who's surviving in the hospital now, was shot through here, up through her mouth. Mm -hmm. um, she can't talk now, but she can write. And she was unconscious and didn't realize her, her sister was deceased, right? Correct. Until? Yeah. Until yesterday evening. I, I know you're going through. I, we can't imagine what you're going through, sir. Is there anything uh, you could just, any way to, to wrap words around what, what you're feeling right now? 
It's hard to. Only uh, it's about as bad as anybody could imagine. It's. Uh, I. It's just not really not words for it. It's such a bad feeling. What'd you say to Lisa when you just saw her in the hospital just now? Um, I just told her how much I loved her and. Um, I don't remember. I said quite a few things to her, but well, we're we're praying for her to pull through, and uh, saying lots of prayers for your family too. And we do appreciate your message tonight, and that is very clear. We've heard it over and over. Something's going on. Please reach out for yes. help before it gets it gets too late. Mr. Rucker, thank you so thank much you for so your much, time yeah. tonight. We appreciate that. Thank you, Heather and Anthony. Back to you. Yeah. If you do know someone who is a victim of domestic violence, be sure and call the Hubbard House. That phone number is 904-354-3114 or the National Domestic Violence Hotline. That number right here on your screen as well, 1-800-799-7233.